All right, folks, welcome back to Into the Cauldron. Uh, I neglected to mention that this show, uh, well, it's not a show. Uh, it's just a series of videos I'm making, but uh, I like Into the Cauldron as a name, so I'm going to start using it. So welcome, Into the Cauldron. So in our first video, what we did was we basically focused on this element of what we have here, which I'll explain that in a moment which is just simply what happens when we put $10, 10 physical dollars into a bank and then somebody borrows. So we had three parties. We had us, we had the bank, and we had the borrower. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to follow a series of these transactions. But before we get started, I'm going to just explain uh, my color coordination and these things so that it's easier for you to follow along. So first, uh, down here, remember that the green signifies actual physical dollars. Again, like the physical dollars in your wallet, regardless of what uh, currency you carry, whether it's a real, a pound, a euro, a dollar, whatever. Green denotes physical. That's the physical uh, money trail. Second will be our ledgers. These are just the electronic ledgers that the bank, uh, that we have with the bank. You know, when you log online to Bank of America, you've got your led ledger and with the uh, alleged amounts of money that you have in the account. Third, and this is going to be for the end. This is just for us. Uh, we're, we're going to actually have to uh, count and add the series of deposits and borrowings in order to arrive at a final number, which will signify the increase in the money supply uh, relative to the transactions we will be walking through here. So the red is going to denote that. And basically all it means is uh, we're not going to count that towards the money supply. All this signifies is that I'm just shifting borrower one to here into this scenario. And so we've already considered the created um, the, the credit that's been created here, and we don't need to consider it again because they've deposited this money into the second bank. But anyway, uh, this is kind of like a pinball, uh, you know, where we're just kind of bouncing all over the place. And so uh, I think when people say things like, uh, follow the money, um, I, I take that very seriously, clearly. So anyway, um, we're gonna get started. So as you guys remember, on the first in the first instance, this, this is our, our system here. This is what entered our system, was a physical $10 bill. It goes into the bank, right? And here's the two accounts. You've got, you remember we have us, and we have the borrower, okay? So in this scenario, what happens is, the bank maintains $1, and they can loan out the other nine, which they do. So they loan out that money. But now, after this has been completed, we're gonna take that $9, or I'm sorry, the borrower who is opening the restaurant, as you remember, is going to take the $9 and they're gonna deposit the $9 they borrowed into their account. And so what happens here is the exact same thing that happened in the first scenario, okay? So the $9 goes into bank number two Bank number two is required to maintain 10% of what was deposited. So what that means is they are required to hold 90 cents. Now what they do is they, borrower two comes into the, to the fray, maybe he's a roofer or something, he wants to start a roofing business, I, I don't know. But he comes into the fray and he wants to borrow, okay? So he borrows uh, the, the excess so he borrows basically, in this case, it'll be $8 in 10 cents. That's what he borrows. That's what he's able to borrow. It's the maximum that the bank is able to lend based on the uh, reserve ratio that they require to keep. Okay, and then as we just fall, we're just gonna follow the money trail from here on out. And so they're gonna take that physical $10, I'm sorry, the physical $8 in 10 cents, that is gonna be deposited into bank number three. We've got another borrower here for who knows what, maybe he wants to build a railroad, I don't know. But basically, this bank is required to hold 81 cents, 
that is 10% of that, and this bank can lend out $7.29. So again, uh, what you see here is, here's all of our ledgers up to date. So on your ledger, shows that you have $10. On um, borrower number one's ledger, $9. Borrower number two's ledger, $8.10. Borrow number three's ledger, $7.29. And just for the sake of being thorough, we go down here to uh, borrow number three, deposits the $7.29, remember, physical, physical money, into bank number four. They hold a physical 73 cents of that. And then borrower number four comes along and, you know, he's borrowing to build a rocket ship. I don't know. And so basically, borrower number four, is the last person that we're going to show for our example here before we go into the calculation of the uh, money supply that exists now. So let's just go through this really quickly. All right, so as far as first, we're going to go through the ledgers. Okay, you have $10 in your account, or so you think. Okay, borrower has nine, or so they think. Borrower two has eight dollars and ten cents. Again, not really. Uh, borrower three has seven dollars and twenty nine cents. And then down here, borrower number four has six dollars and fifty six cents. And based on uh, what's been going on, they actually have this is where the physical money trail ends for right now. Six dollars and fifty six cents. Borrower number four. And as you can see, this bank has eighty one cents. This bank has nine cents. This bank has a physical dollar. And that should account for the to these five, the totality of the actual physical $10. That's where the breakdown is. That's where it all is now. Um, it's been dispersed amongst, uh, you know, borrowers and the banks. Okay. So what we're going to do is we started with $10. So let's see how much uh, alleged money uh, actually exists in this, this system. And forgive me, I'm, this is the first time I've ever explained this, so uh, you know, you can critique or help me do better, you know, whatever, that's all welcome. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here. These are our ledgers right here. This is what people are told when they log into their account online. This is what they're told they have in their accounts with their banks. You have 10, um, borrower number one has nine, borrower number two, eight, ten, and so forth. And so at the beginning, when it was just you and your $10 entering into the system, the, the money supply was $10. Through, these complex, through uh, this complex mechanism, we were able to add, or I should say the banking system was able to add $9 on top of that. So now we have $10 and $9. There's $19 out there because of the credit expansion. Borrower two comes into play. Now we have to add up these three and you get 27.10. So initially we had $10 and within, let's see, two kind of cycles, we're already at 27 dollars and ten cents uh, money supply that is almost a 300 percent increase and so through the transactions that we've had here we started at ten dollars for our money supply and we ended at forty dollars and 95 cents and so our money supply has quadrupled uh, over this span of time so obviously if we continue on this this journey here it's going to, uh, I believe the, the, the final tally is somewhere around a uh, ninefold increase in the money supply. And now in the final video that's coming up, gonna come up next, we're actually going to take a, a real world example, which is gonna be the Federal Reserve System. And we're going to look at their ledger prior to quantitative easing and after. And we're going to kind of surmise uh, how much credit has been basically created out of thin air and thrust into the system. So uh, that's coming up in the next video.